Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. It is August the 23rd and this is our time where we're able to go deeper into the Word of God and so I pray that you go ahead and get your Bibles, get your notepads. We want to remind you that you can always go to our website ambcchicago.org where you can get an outline of the lesson and also the conference call schedule for our Sunday School classes are there. All of this is there to equip you and to help you to study the Word of God because we know it is so very important and so vital to our lives. Today's topic is Bite Your Tongue and we've got some amazing guest teachers who are going to go through the lesson on today and so listen get yourself prepared and ready and let's go to Sunday School right now. Good morning. Welcome to the Antioch Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Hour. We're so glad that you are here with us. Today's lesson is from August the 23rd and the title of it is Bite Your Tongue. We will start our lesson off with prayer. Um, and here we go. Gracious Father, we come to thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We pray, Lord God, as we study your word, we become here, not only hearers, but doers also. We pray, Lord God, that we will learn something that will allow us to walk in alignment with your will and with your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, my name is Cynthia Williams, and my partner today is Ruth Bridges, and we will be bringing you the lesson. Ruth? Hi, good morning. We have this wonderful lesson for you today, Bite Your Tongue, which is taken from James 3, 1 through 12. As a little bit of background, we find here that James is the brother of Jesus. He wrote this letter to the Jewish believers scattered across the Roman Empire around AD 49. James was martyred in Jerusalem about 14 years later, around A.D. 62. And how did you become martyred? It's because you are killed for your beliefs. And that's what happened to James. The book of James is short. It's a very practical letter encouraging believers to have an active, living faith that preserves through all kinds of trials. James addresses issues like arrogance, favoritism, wealth, the impact of words, and serving others in need. One of the key verses here is, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is also dead. And that's taken from James 2 and 26. Our unifying topic here this morning is taming the tongue. We have three outlines for our text here. The first is the power of the tongue, which are verses one through six. Taming the tongue, which is verses seven and eight. And then the renewed heart, which are verses nine through 12. Our main thought says, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire can be. The unifying principle says the spoken word can be either an affirming or destructive force in the lives of vulnerable humans. How can the affirming force prevail in human interaction? James informed believers that only through the discipline required in taming the tongue can the fruits of godly wisdom be made visible in the lives of others? Our aim is to explore the power of the tongue and the importance of controlling the tongue as an outward expression of wisdom. And our life aim, to practice controlling the tongue so it becomes a constant source of healing and refreshment to others. So we're gonna go into our scripture now and Sister Williams is going to work with and give you verses one and two. Okay, uh, verses, verse one says, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. 
So in this lesson, James is reminding us that teaching is a highly respected position. Amen. And so, especially in the church, and sometimes people want to have positions, they want to have titles, they want to have the honor that goes with it. But the scripture says, to whom much is given, much is required. And so because as a teacher, you are required to expound on the word of God, your teaching has to line up with what you, how you live your life. And if you are saying one thing and doing and another you can either draw people to Christ or you can push them away so he's selling telling us that when the day of judgment comes God is going to hold you accountable for what you did say what you didn't say and how you lived your life so be careful if you want to assume the position and the responsibility of being a teacher because that is how you're going to be judged we learn in 2nd Timothy 2 15 it says study to show thyself approved all right a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to correctly expound on the word of God. You can't be lackadaisical in your speech and in what you say because we are the only Bible some people will ever read. And so if you are, are in a position of being a teacher or being a leader in church and you expound on the word of God and you try to tell people the righteous principles of God but you don't live that, you will draw them away from from God. You would draw them away from the church and many people have been hurt because they came into the church expecting to receive the love of God because that's what we say we give them and then instead they were given a cold shoulder they were treated with shame and disrespect but if you exemplify the love of Christ in your behavior then you can draw people to God and so that's what he's telling us and then he goes on to remind us that nobody is perfect. The only perfect person was Christ and so we have to understand that yes you will make mistakes but God gives us the ability to recover to have a second chance so we have to be careful with how what we do James tell us that um, no man can control the tongue but and, and therefore if you can't control the tongue you can't control your body and so, but the only thing that will allow us, and we'll expound on that later, is the Holy Spirit. So he's reminding us that uh, there are things that we can do so that our tongue can be brought under control. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. Okay, Ruth? If we take a look at verse 3 here, it says, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us and turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships which though they be so great and are so driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Okay, so we have here bits in the horse's mouth and we have the ships. So what does that tell us? James gives two analogies that compare to the tongue. We got the horse's bridle, that's that bit in the horse's mouth, may seem ever so small compared to the size of the horse and appear trivial. However, the animal obeys as it is directed as the bit turns the whole body of the horse. Then we've got the ship's rudder. The rudder or helm guides, steers, and controls the ship Though the fierce winds and storms come, turning it by the smallest of objects compared to the ship itself, wherever the captain wants it to go. The bit and the rudder needed a master to take control of them. So does the tongue need a master to take charge, to work properly and accomplish good things? Praise the Lord. Both bit and rudder must be under the control of a strong hand that knows how to use them properly, properly. In the same way, the tongue must overcome the contrary force of the flesh and, the, and be under God's wise control if it is to accomplish anything good. 
Okay. And so, expounding on that, what do we have that would cause us to be brought under control? We have the Holy Spirit in us when we're saved. God gives us the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will guide and direct you into the right way to go. And when you go off the beaten path, you will feel the pressure of the Holy Spirit causing you to have condemnation so that you can change your behavior. So that's what we have to bring us into alignment. And... Um, to, so just like this rudder and the uh, bridle and the, tongue, and the a horse's mouth. The next part of the lesson 5 and 6 says, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and sitteth on fire the course of nature and is set on a fire of hell. So even though the tongue is a small member, just like these examples that he had given, it has mighty force and it has a mighty power. And we know that things have been spoken to us that have hurt us to the core. And so we have to be careful with what we say with our tongues because even though it's a small member, it wields a lot of power. And so... Um, James goes on to remind us of the three devastating effects on the body by the tongue. One is it, it defiles the whole body. You, what you say with your mouth can make your whole body appear unholy and unrighteous. And then he said it destroys the life cycle. It can destroy how you live your life. It can cause death and destruction. Just like in the California wildfires, they're started by sometimes just a match being put down. The match may have been blew out, but it, the fire starts because the grass and the environment is fertile for the fire to grow. And then next you know we have a raging fire over the whole countryside and it just devastates a whole neighborhood. This is how the tongue can do. And then he says it is evil to the rest of the body. This tongue of ours can cause us to die. Spiritual death can come from the tongue. We can say words that will crush and kill somebody spiritually with our tongues. You have seen people who have been hurt, who have been angry, and they hold this position changes. It's yes. like all of a sudden you see their face change, your face will change, your attitude will change, your whole body will change because of what has been said with the tongue. When we grew up, if you said my mama, we was ready to fight. I didn't hear what else you said about my mama. All I heard was you said your mama. And then automatically you got an attitude, you got in a stance of defense, and you were ready to fight. Even though you may not have heard, they may have said your mama's a good cook, but all you heard was they going to say something about your mama, and that was it. And it took you to another level. So we have to understand that this tongue can destroy us. And words, when spoken, cannot always be taken back. It is not enough to be able to say, I'm sorry, because the damage has already been done. And so we have to be careful about this little tongue and the way we use it, the things that we say. It's just like with charming speech. Some people can eloquently speak. Oh, yes. And they can wrap you around their finger. I, I, I am someone who loves a deep voice and don't have to let him talk with intelligence and can put a sentence together, conjugate his verbs and talk like he know what he's saying. I am mesmerized. But you know, just as slick as that tongue is, it can do the same thing and destroy you. It can draw you in. And then once you're in, it can leave you out there hanging. Many people have fallen by the slippery tongue. And so we have to be careful of what we say with our tongue, how we say it, and then how we live our lives. Because people don't always live up to what they say. Mm -hmm. It will not be easy. <laughs> Verse 7 says, For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. It is certainly a mystery and astounding that man can tame the beasts, birds, serpents, and mammals or creatures in the sea. James reminds us that animals can be tamed, therefore the fire of the tongue can be tamed only by God. At Pentecost, that was the first part of our bodies that God took control of, the tongue. 
they were all on one accord in their speech. We get to verse 8 where it says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. James says that no man can tame the tongue for it is unruly. That is restless, uneasy, unstable, always roaming about, evil and full of deadly poison. Some animals are poisonous, but some of our tongues spread poison. Getting the poison out is God's job. Therefore, if God does not can take control of your heart, it will be that way, full of evil and poison. But when God does fill our hearts with his love, then out of our hearts will flow the abundance of life, filling the tongue with good and wholesome things. An evil tongue is the tool of the devil, but a wholesome, tame tongue is a tool for God. Praise God. If he can save a soul, he can tame a tongue. It, if we give our will over to him. When we get to verse 9, it says, Therefore, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. James includes himself, if again, as he refers to the believers. The tongue can bless God in one breath and curse men in the next. The tongue gives us a picture of the basic human nature. We are good, made in God's image, but we are also bad, fallen, and sinful. Are we like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Heaven forbid. We must stay in worship with God. He works to change us from the inside out. While he is doing that, we must not attack man, but speak against sin. Verse 10 says, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. As I said earlier, we have only one mouth and two eyes. And out of that one mouth comes blessing and cursing. This is not supposed to come out of a believer's mouth. God wants consistent behavior, consistent speech that edifies. And James calls them my brethren, meaning we are of the family of God. Okay. All right. Uh, just to back up a little bit, uh, in P Proverbs twelve twenty one, it says, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit." We have to understand the evil that we can speak with this Amen. tongue will cause death. But then at the same time, if we want to be like Christ, then we'll learn to speak those things that are pleasing to His sight. One of the things for us to learn how to be consistent in using our tongues is to understand that we have given the ability to develop the fruits of the Spirit. And one of those is self-control. And if you develop self-control, you will consistently speak what God wants you to say. You, our pastor has a saying, you can't always say what you think. And that's self-control. Sometimes you have to speak things that will not harm someone, but that will build them up. And that's the Christ in you, learning not to say the things that will condemn them, but allow them to be able to be built up. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so therefore, I can't judge you by your sins because I have sinned. And so when we speak to people, we have to speak from the love of Christ that is in us and not from a place of condemnation. And that's what God wants to remind us. And then in verse 11 and 12, he says, does a fountain send forth at the same time, at, at the same place, sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive bears, either a vine fig? So you know, wait, let me start over. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine fig, either a vine fig, so you know fountains both yield salt and fresh water. And the bottom line of this, in nature, 
if it is an apple tree, it's going to bear apples. It's not going to bear oranges. If it's a fig tree, it's going to bear fig tree. What you see is what you get. With Christians and with your tongue, we have the ability to say one thing and do another. To sweetly encourage you and give you words of aspiration and then cut you down like a knife. But the thing that will allow us to bring all of that under control is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit allows us to come into alignment with God and with his word. And so we don't always say the things that we know will tear you down. It will allow you to not get angry even when you have been offended. It will allow you to turn the other cheek. The tongue can speak blessings and curses. But God has granted us the ability to be consistent in our speech. We have to think when we speak, will this help you or will this harm you? Will this uplift you? We have the choice. God has given us the ability. And that's what separates us from the animals. This tongue separates us from the animals. The Holy Spirit in us guides us to have a choice to do the right thing. You have to consistently make the choice to do what's right, to say what's right, and to be right. Uh, in this lesson, we understand the destructive powers of the tongue. And it begins off with telling us about teachers. This holy, the holy word of God is precious. And we have to be careful how we handle it, how we present it to others. And understand that because we have taken up the mantle to be a teacher, some of us, God has given us the spiritual ability to teach. And some people have placed themselves in that position. You are going to be judged by what you say and the lifestyle that you live. And if your lifestyle does not align up with what you're saying, understand when God comes, he's going to judge you. You can can't sing praises to God in the church and then go out to the bar and drink and flirt and all this other stuff that you know is unholy. He says, be ye holy for I am holy. And that's not a, only holy on Sunday at 11 o'clock. It's a lifestyle that you have to strive to achieve. But we have the Holy Spirit in us who will guide and direct us to do those things. It's a process. It's something that you have to exercise control over the tongue every day. Uh, we have to know, we have to consistently live our lives in agreement with God, led by the Holy Spirit. We have to surrender our will to His will. And we have to take up His cross and follow Him. So that when people see us, and when we, especially when we're giving them the Word of God, we have to be careful that when they see us, they see us doing that. You can't give people biblical principles. You can't give people the doctrine of the Lord, the gospel, and then not live it. God will hold you accountable. The soul that you lose because you falsely represented him will cause you to not be in alignment with his will and his way. He is a just and forgiving God. Our tongues have the ability to uplift, to to uh, bring people to God, but they also have the ability to draw people away from God. And I don't want to be responsible for drawing someone away from God because of how I, what I say and because of what I do. Amen. I would like to add something here. It says, whether you have the gift of teaching or not, every person should pass on the things that they have learned about God to other people. So in a way, are we not all teachers to a certain extent? Hebrews 5 and 12 says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. Note that the verse says, the Hebrew believers should be teachers. Every person should grow past the baby stage and learn how to feed themselves, and then, in turn, give food to babies. In like, man in like manner, every believer should pass on what they learn to others. But we should be careful about the words we say. We need to make sure that the gospel we share is the same one the apostles shared, and that this encouragement that we give is based on love. We need to reevaluate 
what we do, what we say, and realize that that little bitty portion of our body, that little organ that we refer to as the tongue, can cause many, many problems or can be a blessing to somebody. Okay. That's all we have. We'll have our closing prayer. Okay. Shall we pray? Gracious Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to expound on your word. We pray, Lord God, that it will be a lamp unto people's uh, a lamp unto people's feet. We pray, Lord God, that someone has heard something that will encourage them to watch what they say and watch what they do so that we can be in a line with your will and in your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we've had a great lesson on today. Listen, if you've got some takeaways, I need you to go ahead and write those in the comments right now, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. Share your takeaways from today's lesson. As others watch this video and go through those comments, it'll be a help to them and their study. So do your part, enter your takeaways in the comments now. We wanna thank our teachers. We wanna thank our Sunday school superintendent, Cynthia Irwin, all of those who helped to make this possible and available to you, these uh, resources that will now exist forever for study of the Word of God. We thank you for tuning in and being connected with us. I want to remind you that you can give to Sunday School in the same ways that you're able to give to Antioch, and you can designate your gift, your offering for Sunday School for our Christian Education Department here at Antioch. You can give on our website, ambcchicago.org, put in the memo Sunday School, and you can give your Sunday School offering there. You can give on the Givelify app, search Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, you can give by dropping off or mailing in your donation to Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 415 West Inglewood, Chicago, Illinois, 60621. You can call the church number at 773-873-4433, and you can make arrangements for your gift to be picked up from you. Or you can use Zelle using the email address AntiochChurchChicago at gmail.com. You can give through Zelle. And once again, you can indicate on all of your gifts Sunday School if that's where you want those donations to go to. And so, thank you so much for giving. Thank you so much for being a part of our entire Sunday School department and all of our visitors and guests. We thank you for being connected with us. want to remind you to tune in at 10 a.m. on Facebook only Antioch Live. Live will be streaming live from this sanctuary at 10 a.m. on Facebook. Can't wait to see you there. This is your digital pastor, Terrell Carter. We'll see you next time.